Have you ever visited a flea market, swap meet, or garage sale? To run a successful booth takes a combination of desirable merchandise, a positive attitude, and an irresistible charm. Elmo P. Middleton had much to offer in all those departments. But despite all this, you might say his business was a disaster. The local swap meet was a place where we used to go to browse and shop for bargains. But this week we were going to operate our own booth. It was part of the plan I had to get some extra money that would help my daughter Molly go to the state university. The swap meet had been closed for about a month since the earthquake. And there were still aftershocks going on. But at 8 a.m., all the people were arriving just like a regular Sunday. My daughter, Molly, is the best daughter a parent could ever wish for. She worked hard throughout high school with one goal in mind. College. That was her dream. To go to a good school somewhere and make me proud. As if she hadn't done that already. As any parent will tell you, college education isn't cheap. Tuition, books, room and board, and with a small scholarship, it's, it's way more than I can afford. My late husband, Marv, was a good man. He always provided for his family, but his insurance only covered so much. My job just gets us by. I didn't have a lot to sell at this market, but I was determined to go home with some money for Molly's education. Molly was preoccupied all the time. I knew she was worried and anxious about what her future choices were going to be. At the start of the day, we just couldn't seem to interest anyone in anything we had to offer. Molly turned on all her schoolgirl charm, but nothing seemed to be helping. We have been here for three hours, and we haven't even sold a lampshade. Mom, the day is not over yet. I don't know, honey. This may not have been one of my best ideas. Can I help you? All you got here is just a bunch of regular junk. I don't see anything special in the whole lot. You want to sell that old station wagon? I could use something to haul my stuff in. No, thanks. Um, we needed to haul our stuff. Have it your way. But I wouldn't count on having a big day. Well, thank you so much. Mom, I've been thinking. Maybe I should put off going to college for a little while. Get a job, make some money. It's no big deal. Really. You are going to go to college. We'll find a way. That was when we first saw him, the man in the Model T. Middleton, Elmo P. Middleton, yes. <laughs> Purveyor of unusual and rare merchandise. <laughs> Did you feel that? Feel what? Well, that tremor. Actually, I didn't feel anything. Well, maybe next time. The back of his truck was loaded with an amazing assortment of things. He didn't waste a moment and unloaded quickly. As he did, I kept wondering, who was this strange man and what was he doing in Northridge? Another question that kept haunting me was, why didn't he feel the earth tremor we hello, all felt? Hello, hello, anything you see you like, anything you like you see. Come on, folks, take a gander. <laughs> how much, uh, how much for that grandma book? How much you got? Looks awfully new, probably fake. You know, everything you see here is a genuine article, mister. Okay, how much? How much you got? Well, how much were those old books? How much you got? Look, mister, I'm trying to buy something here. Give me a price. How much you got? <laughs> Whoa. Ah, how about you, mister? How much you got? Hey, how much you got, lady? Take no matter what people how asked for, got, Mr. Middleton would repeat those same words. How much you got, mister? Hey, come on in here. Plenty of room. 
Everybody felt insulted by his questions, so nobody bought anything. It's a lovely lamp, isn't it? Yes. How much would a lamp like that cost? Well, how much have you got? Oh, I couldn't buy anything. We're here trying to sell stuff, too. I know, isn't everybody? Uh, Molly? How'd you know my name? You really love this lamp, don't you? Yeah, but, like I said, I couldn't buy anything. How much money you got in your pocket? Three dollars. Sold to the beautiful little lady. <laughs> Enjoy it. Molly told me later that she wasn't sure why she gave the man her three dollars. There was just something about him that she liked and trusted. Titanic. This could be worth a fortune. Oh, look, it's so old. Oh, isn't that beautiful? A million thoughts were racing through my head. Oh, Molly. Molly's great grandfather was one of the passengers lost on the Titanic. He had a handlebar mustache, too, just like Mr. Middleton. His name was Marvin L. Jurgens. This was your great-grandfather's. The Titanic artifacts proved to be authentic and paid for Molly's college education, but who was Elmo P. Middleton? Was he really the spirit of a long-lost relative of the Jurgens family? Or was he just an old man who had a soft spot for a struggling mother and daughter? But then... How did he come into possession of relics from the Titanic? Is this story of unexpected treasures based on actual event, or are we swapping the truth for more lies?